Welcome to the channel, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Drugs and alcohol are prevalent throughout our society today, but they are not the answer to personal problems. A lot of people are using the excuse of mental health and medicinal reasons, but these people are addicted to the substance. The medical system doesn't mind that because whatever happens, they're making money out of whatever pharmaceuticals or drugs they can sell. That's what Big Pharma's about. But this isn't about Big Pharma. It's about individuals who have made all the excuses they needed to, have all, had all the tactics and all the justifications for their liking of the drugs that they're, take, they're taking. These people are very self-unaware of how obvious it is that they enjoy the drug. The drugs become the problem and therefore they need the drug and more drugs to help with the problem of the drugs and the alcohol. I've seen these people smoke and drink themselves to death over and over and over again. You'll see them sitting outside casualties or emergencies in hospitals with all the latest state-of-the-art technology hanging out of them, having a smoke. For mine, for where I stand, I don't even think those people deserve medical help. Let them take their cigarettes, their illnesses and their sicknesses somewhere else and go away and die like a dirty rat. They're steeped in sin, they've made wrong decisions, they've ruined their children, they've wrecked themselves, they haven't led by example. All they've done is teach people how to get the money for their narcotics, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, medications, how to justify doing it, and how, ma how to maintain a functioning lifestyle while doing it. A lot of these people are not being medicated for illnesses or sicknesses. They're being medicated for the medication. They enjoy the alcohol, they enjoy the drugs, the dope, they enjoy the meth, the ice, the heroin, and let me say to you, the big ones like ice, methamphetamine and the real quick killers, they're no different to the slow ones like alcohol, nicotine and dope. They're all contributing to the same end, which is an accelerated death and a life of excuses and misery based on the enjoyment of an outside substance to elicit an internal temporary solution. These things have put people in asylums, they've put them even further than that into early graves and the determination of some people to continue on their drug fueled path is demonic. A lot of these people are demon-inspired, demon-influenced, demonized. They won't find their way out because there's such an element of joy enjoyment in the sensation and the hobby. It becomes a hobby. It becomes my drug, my alcohol. It's my turn they lose all their money to it they lose their relationships to it they lose their friendships they're very recluse they're enmeshed with family members they all like a pack of rats live around the substances they're victims you know how you see a rat with a chunk out the side of it it just doesn't look right it's got three legs and 
half an ear missing. They're like this because they've lived their lives just beating themselves up internally with drug abuse and medication abuse. A lot of them have sinus problems from cocaine abuse and they make excuses for this from smoking. They've burned all the inside of their sinuses and ducts of their airways. They've got this illusion that they can beat science and that they ain't going to die young like all the others. They've got this epiphany that they're going to outlive the system, the facts and the truth. They're living a lie. Um, they've been deceived into the lies of that culture. Um, they are very sad, depressed, with low self-esteem. Um, they live in fear of the public they blame past tragedy and unfortunateness for the reason why they're doing it but what they've forgotten in their selfishness and self-centeredness and ignorance and sinfulness is that they're not the only ones and there's millions of people that have found their way out of the same situations they're in with fantastic results and fantastic changes in life. They've turned their lives around. This culture now is breaking into the lives of people much younger. The parents are now passing it on. This substance culture to their children they're grooming their children into this way of life uh, thinking that they're doing some kind of parental fortitudinal construct to their child they're actually destroying their children they're demonized they are no different to a pedophile but in the drug culture it's all abuse, it's all child abuse, just because it's not at the sexual level. There are a lot of people drugging their young children because they cry. Here, take this, here, take this. And they're ruining the minds of these young people because they're out of their mind themselves. They're disguised throughout the communities they're working inside the in community um, groups because they know how to function. They're no different to pedophiles that get into cult groups and get access to children and this kind of thing. They grandize each other. They grandise the suppliers. The mother will grandise herself or the father by giving the money to the child to acquaint the people with the drugs to get the drugs. And they all end up heroes. He got it. I paid for it. Look at us. Look at us. Look at me. Look at him. And around it goes again. Then the financier gets sick. The other people are disabled, they don't know how to raise that kind of money, just get that kind of a supply. They start to turn in on each other. Usually the parent comes up with the great answer. They look back and people look back at them and go, well, they just wasted their life on drugs. They've got nothing to show for it. They become estranged, they become isolated. They become paranoid, sick, ill before their time. Their bodies start to fail. People have no patience or time for them.
the hospital system is full of these people, the medical systems are blocked and choked with these alcoholic and drug addict people. They've had every opportunity to succeed and chosen not to, consciously chosen not to, consciously, not accidentally. They wanted the drugs and they wanted the alcohol and they supplied their children as well. These people are rogues, they're trouble, they get rejected, they get pushed away, they're victims, martyrs, nothing works for them. They hide under the radar just far enough to look like they're functioning, but they're not. They're paranoid, schizophrenic. They've got motor neuron diseases inside them. Their organs are failing. They're gluttons, liars, drunkards, scheming. They don't know what decent is because they've really never seen it and if they do see it, they despise it. I've seen these people with parents that have made Mother Teresa look... look evil. And they've still turned out to be addicts and alcoholics. It's not the parents who are to blame at the end of the day. The parent might get the children on the drug but at the end of the day, it's a child who's responsible as they mature for their decisions. Although you could say a lot of these parents are accessories to the fact it's a dead end. It's the road that leads to nowhere. There's no excuses. The evidence is there, these people are prideful, their identities tied up in their self-abuse. They try and take out people they get involved with, but most of the time they end up alone, people won't tolerate it. They have a narcissistic determination to enjoy these wicked evil habits. The police are tired of them, they're finding people dead, suicide, murders, domestic violence, sexual abuse, all the stuff that comes with it. They don't know how to transition into a normal life because they've never ever had one. They've made wrong choices, wrong partners and allowed themselves to be subject to the convenience of these abusive partners to accommodate the, the substance abuse that they have. Nobody's complaining, well, even though I'm unhappy, I've got my habit, that'll, I'll stay with that. Some of these people use Christianity as a means of hiding. They'll eat at the food places that the Christians provide whilst wasting everything they have on their drugs and nicotine and all the rest of it. Many of them have had good careers and wasted their careers over the substances and alcohol. Their mental health isn't what it should be and is never going to be what it should be. Julia's in Rome and all that. Is she? Yeah, I don't know how she does it. Um, sorry about that. Their teeth are missing, along with their mind is missing. Parts of their ears and noses have been bitten off. The women become masculine, trying to rescue their children from the way in which they have disabled them. There's terrible confusion, conceitedness, backbiting and undermining, internal collusions within their own minds and then against each other that are closest to them. 
the mess is evident to everyone around them but they can't seem to see how obviously lost that they are people look at them and they try and smile away the reality but in the back of the minds that people know them they think how do the, how do these people actually how are they surviving hey how are they surviving what they're doing to themselves you know and some people feel sorry for them and these people will gravitate to these people but they don't last because they're too determined in their way of life to stay on the path that leads to destruction <coughs> they have no regard for the people around them as I said before they know how to scheme they've got minds and they know how to use them they scheme systems they know how to scheme money they know how to present themselves to look normal but to the normal person you can tell they've abused themselves for most of their life a lot of these people's victim mentality is just not enough to justify the condition that they're in doctors and medical people are completely stunned and shocked by how far these people go to maim and hurt themselves This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, advising anyone that's involved in this way of life that you can find your way out, but you don't have to wait till you've lost a limb, your sinuses are gone, your teeth are starting to fall out, you've lost enough, you know, good relationships, your health's failing. It's starting to come to your conscience that your children are a consequence of what you have taught them. You do need to be confronted with a self-reality check. Whatever that takes. See, self-professing to be a victim of life and what life's done to you is not going to sell it when you front up before your maker. These self-deceptive conclusions are not enough and won't be enough when your life comes to light. You will stand there and have to give an account to God. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Couldn't you have done this and shouldn't you have done that? Oh, no, you actually liked what you were doing, did you? Oh, no, 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 I didn't. I was... The lies won't work. The Bible says... Let the wicked forsake their way. The unrighteous person their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord and to our God. And he will abundantly pardon you. It also says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just pray that anyone listening to this right now would have a sense of your Holy Spirit, your forgiveness and grace, your mercy. 
and would begin the step-by-step, -step, micro-incremental step journey to winning their life back out of the hands of the devil. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he shall redeem out of the hand of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen.